What's going on guys? Stefan, SNE's Garage. Today we're going to be doing a coolant system service on the Missus 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, we're coming up on 100,000 miles so we're just going to go ahead and start taking care of some of the fluids and uh, we're just going to walk you through how we're going to service the cooling system today. So let's get right into it. So I went ahead and purchased some Xerox uh, Dex Cool. This is good for GM, Ford and Chrysler vehicles. Uh, if you'll notice we went with the concentrated coolant so this is 100% coolant. It is not diluted. And we have our distilled water here, one gallon, to dilute it to make our 50-50 mix. Uh, whenever you can buy coolant from the store straight, I always recommend doing that. Because when you buy it pre-mixed, uh, you're basically buying a half a gallon of coolant and water. And you can get the water for under a dollar at your local uh, Target, you know, any, any store like that. Uh, so with this, we're going to be draining the radiator. And then we're going to be refilling it. Now, to refill it, you're going to need one of two things. You're either going to need this airlift kit, which is what we're going to be using to fill this, or you're going to need your spill-proof funnel to go ahead and bleed the cooling system, which can be a little time-consuming. So the airlift is the way to go. Now, to use the airlift, you're going to need a, an air compressor that can put out some volume because it basically uses air to create a vacuum in the cooling system. And it basically uses that vacuum to, to vacuum fill the cooling system and it fills all air voids or anything you won't have any air bubbles when you're done and i'm going to show you exactly how to use that as well uh, so the first thing i'm going to say is whenever you're going to service your cooling system you want to make sure that your car is cold you know just touch the hose make sure it ain't hot give it a squeeze make sure there's no pressure behind it because you don't want to get burned when you go ahead and remove your radiator cap before draining it always remove it slowly and in one fluid motion so you don't get burned or sprayed so we're gonna go ahead and set this aside now the drain for this cooling system is right down there you can see the little red uh, valve down there petcock whatever you want to call it now technically you should have to remove this shield but we're not going to do that uh, if I set you down here you'll see right around here that there is a little nipple on the bottom of the radiator so we're going to put a 3 8 inch hose on that nipple and we're going to route it right to our drain pan which is directly under here and we're going to do this the easy way we're not going to pull the shield down or anything so let's get that hose set up and then we're going to go ahead and open that petcock all right guys so you'll see i routed my hose right down to the drain pan down there so we're just going to take a regular old pair of pliers here and we're going to go ahead and open this radiator drain and it should start draining into our pan right here so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna let this drain until it's done and uh, we'll be back with you once it's empty now while we have this draining I did want to mention that I am going to go ahead and put everything that we're using today in my Amazon storefront. I'm going to link that down below and I'll also put individual links for certain products. So I'll link the coolant, we'll do the airlift and we'll do a spill proof funnel that way you guys can order them if you need them because it makes this job 100% uh, easier. And also I'll put a little link if I can find one for a little bit of 3 8 inch hose. This is just 3 8 uh, 3 8 inch fuel hose that we're using. But as long as you have a 3 8 inch hose that'll fit over that nipple, uh, you won't have to remove that splash shield, which was a huge plus. So let's let it drain. We'll be back with you when it's empty. So if you guys followed our lead and did concentrated coolant and a gallon of distilled water, you're going to need another bucket to go ahead and mix your coolant. So we have that set up. We're going to go ahead, take this cap off, use our knuckle right here, punch that through. And we're just going to pour this directly into our AutoZone bucket here. And now I'm going to put the water in and we're going to mix it up. Alright guys, we got our distilled water and coolant in. We're just going to go ahead and mix it up a little bit. Uh, it's always important to use distilled water when you're mixing your own coolant because regular tap water has minerals and, and stuff in it. And those minerals can crystallize inside your cooling system and they can cause corrosion and stuff. So you want to try to avoid that at all costs. If you can just run to the store and get distilled water or deionized water, that's the way to go. Uh, so we're just going to let this thing keep draining. We have our coolant ready and then we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to drain our overflow. I'm probably just going to siphon this out and then we're going to go ahead and uh, start filling it. All right, guys, so we went ahead and started a siphon here using the same 3 8 hose for this uh, 
coolant reservoir. I got a mouthful of coolant. Don't recommend doing it that way. If you have a Mighty Vac, use a Mighty Vac. I'll link one of them below too. Uh, I used to have one when I worked in the dealer, but that was a shop tool. I haven't bought one yet. So maybe to save myself from taking a mouthful of coolant in the future, I'm going to invest in one of them also. So I'll add that to the Amazon store and I'll <laughs> drop one in a link down below. So we're just going to go ahead and let this finish draining and then we'll go ahead and put our mixed coolant back in, fill it up and uh, call it a day. So I got this pretty much empty, but there's a little bit of crud down there that I don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take this thing out. Looks like there's an 8 millimeter bolt here. There's one over here, back behind the filler neck, and then there's one down at the bottom. When I get it out, I'll show you exactly where that is. And we're going to rinse this thing out with the uh, garden hose, make it nice and clean. Alright guys, we got this guy off. There's one bolt hole, two bolt hole, and three. Full disclosure, that bottom one sucks. Uh, and I'm probably not putting it back in, but you'll see there's a bunch of crud in here. That's the main reason I wanted to take this off, so I could really, you know, clean this out and get it to look as best as I can. And there you have it. For the most part, nice and clean in there. It's about as clean as we're going to get it. We're going to put this back on, fill it up. Alright guys, so now that we went ahead and reconnected our, uh, our overflow tank, we got our coolant up here and we got our airlift ready. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to attach the cone here. This cone is going to go into the radiator. And then you're going to plug an air line into this end of the airlift. And it's going to begin to draw a vacuum on the cooling system. basically waiting for the little arrow to go into the green, I'll show you. So we want this arrow to be into the green. And once it's in the green, we can go ahead and start filling. Alright, so we got this in the green. We got our coolant tube here, and we are now basically sucking coolant into the engine. So my compressor came on while I was doing that, and it kind of got a little noisy, but basically, once you have this arrow here in the green, you go ahead, you shut this valve off, you remove this piece from here, and then you plug in this end here which I have right now filling the overflow and what that's going to do is all the vacuum that's in the cooling system is going to suck the coolant directly out of your coolant container and it's like I said before going to completely eliminate any air bubbles that are in the system this system will be completely bled there will be no reason to let it idle or run or anything it'll be completely filled with coolant and void of any air bubbles. So let me go ahead and finish filling up the overflow. We're going to top off the radiator just a little bit and then we're going to start it up and see how it runs. So of the two gallons that we made, this is all we have left. We have a little over a quart. So two gallons is going to be the magic number for this. Now if you didn't use an airlift like us, this would be the point where you find the correct adapter, set your spill proof funnel up and you'd fill the cooling system all the way up until about halfway up the funnel and then you would start the car and let it run and you would continue to monitor to you know for air bubbles and everything in that um spill proof funnel and you'd be monitoring or monitoring uh the temperature of the upper and lower radiator hoses and uh you're going to want to wait for both hoses to get hot because that would indicate to you that your thermostat is opened so let's go ahead fire the car off uh just let it run for a second make sure everything's okay and uh that's going to be it all right guys so here you have it you just service the cooling system on your Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, you're just going to want to monitor your overflow levels for the next couple of days. Make sure they stay at or around the full mark. Uh, if you did have any air pockets in the system that self burp, uh, that will drop. Just top it off. That's completely normal. Uh, you're just going to want to check your upper and lower hoses. Make sure they're both hot. And they are. So that means that our thermostat is open. Coolant is flowing. 
and uh, in theory there should not be any more bubbles. Uh, so please, if this video helped you, like, share, subscribe. Be sure to dispose of your coolant in a approved manner. Uh, you can take it to many auto parts stores, uh, many shops will take it. Don't just dump it down the drain, it's toxic. Uh, so, like, share, subscribe. See you next time.